What I'm going to talk about today is I want to talk about something really simple, but it seems to be can be very complex. <laughs> And that is how to dry your herbs, how to successfully dry your herbs. Okay, so I'm gonna show you some of the, can you see this thread? And here's my basket. And I'm gonna show you some of the tricks that I use um, that I've learned over time. This, you know, I didn't just learn this I wasn't born knowing this and it didn't happen suddenly. It's just all the tricks that I've learned over time, how to successfully dry herbs. Um, and especially after you've had a plant that you really put the time and effort into harvest and take care of and and then you go to use it and then it's moldy or gone bad. Oh my gosh, I do not like that. Um, so we're gonna talk about the three things that I consider and then there's three ways. Once you consider those things, then you figure out <clears throat> Um, which method you want to use and I'm going to talk about three different methods okay so um, if you know anybody else that you think would like to hear about this uh, go tag them or however we do it get them on this talk because this is going to be a good talk or share the talk okay so there's three things one there's three things to consider before you decide which method to use to dry your plants number one What's your environmental climate? That mean that may just seem like no-brainer, duh, but it's really, do you live in a hot and dry climate? Do you live in a wet and moist climate? What's, what's it like where you live? Do you live in a humid area? Do you live coastal? Do you live in the dry mountains? Where do you live? So that's the first thing you wanna consider. What's the climate of where you live? Okay, so again, I'm gonna talk about the three things that you consider before you choose one of the three methods that I use to successfully dry my herbs. And I get a lot of calls about this. And the other thing I wanna just say is that um, if you, just before I get started with that, I have a live retreat coming up in uh, October and I haven't taught a live retreat in th three years because I've been learning how to shoot video and be online, but I'm so excited. And there's, I think there's like three spots left. Um, and um, I actually have an old student that wanted to come that can't come and she's offered um, a little, a half a scholarship. So I'm not advertising this, I'm just, and if you see this later, it's probably already gone. But for those of you who are with me live here, um, I have someone that's offered someone a half scholarship to be able to, to come to the retreat with me in October. So I'm going to post the link and you can look at that and know that you could come for half off. So if you know somebody or like I said, it'll probably be it'll be scooped up soon. But if you're here live and you want to come to a live retreat with me and really do an incredible herbal immersion, that is happening. Okay, so the first thing you want to consider when you're drying your herbs, number one, environmental climate. What's the, what, where do you live? You know, do you live in Arizona? Do you live in San Francisco? Do you live in the South? Do you, what's the climate like? And so you need a, a, a dry, warm, hot place is going to be much different. Your, your technique's gonna be much different. I have a student that um, she's been, She's done my retreat several times and it's just so transformed her life that she wants to pass it forward. So that's cool. Um, okay, the second thing you wanna consider is your household climate. Do you live in one of these houses where, you know, it's hot outside, but it's hotter in your house? <laughs> or it's cold outside, but it's colder in your house? Okay, that's what you wanna, you wanna go, okay, my house is, you know, I live in this climate, you know, hot and dry, cold and wet, whatever, moist, damp, humid. Um, but then my house is even drier, or my house, you know, I'm dealing with dampness and darkness in my house, okay? So that's another consideration. And the other thing that really contributes to the, your household climate is blowing air. So if you have any kind of blowing air, if you have, you know, that's hot or cold blowing air. So it could be a heater, it could be a fan, could be an, a, a ceiling fan or a floor fan, or if you have, um, you know, anything that blows in your house, you know, or maybe you have a, a wood stove that blows air, right? Anything that blows air is gonna make your household climate much drier, okay? 
Um, yeah, so any any kind of um, blowing air. The other thing is how many really sunny windows do you have, right? You That will increase the climate. So you just wanna look at the climate in your house and you, pro you already know what, what you're dealing with, okay? So you've got your environmental climate of where you live, what time of year it is, and your household climate. The third thing is um, just what, what, how much, the, the third consideration is what herb are you drying, okay? So what's the, what is the water content of the herb that you're drying? Is it a dry herb or is it a wet herb, okay? So you're, you're drying something like, today I'm gonna show you how to, um, one of the methods I use for sage. Sage is a very dry herb. It's also at the end of summer, it's dry. So I'm gonna be dry, I'm gonna show you how I handle a dry herb in a moist climate during a dry time of the year, okay? Um, but you might wanna be drying comfrey or you might wanna be drying some marshmallow leaf, which are really moist herbs, right? So what's the moisture content of your herb? Like basil, basil has a little bit of moisture. People are trying to dry basil right now. Okay, so you're gonna consider your environmental climate, you're gonna uh, consider your household climate, and then you're gonna consider the, um, the moistness or dryness of your herb, okay? So once you figure that out, then you can decide which method you wanna use. So there's three, three different ways. One is the basket method. <laughs> you can do things like, um, you can like get a screen, get a nice screen and, and um, like staple boards so that you have like a square screen and dry your herbs on that. Um, but you know, you can get these baskets that, I get most of my baskets at the thrift store, but you see it's got holes in it. So there's air circulation. You want something that's gonna hold your basket, but that has air circulation. So I prop this up on a little brick and, um, and then I lay the herbs out on here, okay? So number one is the basket method. Now, your basket method depends on, uh, how you do your basket method depends on where you live. So for many, many years, you know, I was raised in the Sacramento Valley in California. It's like 116 a lot. It's really dry, it's dry at night, it's dry, it's dry all the time. It's hot and dry all the time in the summer. So I could go outside and harvest pretty much any herb come in and literally just like throw it on this basket, not pay attention to how I lay it out. And sometimes even like two or three hours later, I would come back and everything would be dry, okay? So, you know, so you may not live in that hot or and dry of a climate. You may just live in like a moderately dry climate. And then if you do, what you wanna do instead of just throwing them on the basket, you actually lay them on the basket carefully Let's see, I don't have, um, so that, oh, I'll just show you what, I have another dry. You, you don't like lay them so they touch each other. You lay them so that they separate, that they're separated, okay? Because where, when they, where they touch each other is where you can get mold, okay? So if you need to be a little bit careful, it's not like super dry, but it's, you know, warm enough, then you just lay it out so that they're not all laying on top of each other, okay? And then what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you don't, you're not gonna put it in the direct sun, right? The direct sun will just dry out your, you know, just take all the constituents out of your plants. You put it in, um, definitely not in the direct sun and not by blowing air, okay? So you just put it on a counter where it's not gonna get just wasted by the sun or by blowing air and you let it dry, okay? And so I will get to the question, um, how long do you let it dry? And you know, you get um, more and more just tuned into this and able to do this as time goes on. So I remember one time early on, I harvested a bunch of plantain, I harvested it really carefully and I had a whole bunch and I laid it out and I let it dry. And then I put it in the jar and it's like, oh, I was so excited. And then I came back two weeks later to, to make tea out of that and it was moldy. 
and I did not like that because I put the, I put a lot of effort into laying it out, right? Laying it out and letting it dry. So I got really good. I was just like, that's not going to happen again. And especially sometimes when you harvest your herbs or wildcraft your herbs, it takes a lot of effort. You know, you you don't want those plants to waste. Okay. So we've talked about the number one way to dry. Number two, okay, so this is if, I don't know if you can see this string. Number two, so remember, this is like if you have a drier climate. Now, let's say you live in a drier climate, but it's winter and it's, and it's you know, moister. Or let's say you live in a moister area or a humid area, or you live like I do now by the coast. So what you wanna do is you get a string and you tie it, right? You tie it so that it's secure. Okay, so you tie your string so you have like a little loop, right? Then uh, you take your string and you go like this. Can you see this? Tell me if you can see it. Okay, so you get your loop, you go like this, and you grab one part of the loop and pull it tight. See that? Now you have a hanging. Now you can hang this, right? And so you just have all these little loops around and you can, now you can um, put up like a little string of nails on, a, on wherever in your house. So again, here's your loop. Get your thing like that. Okay, and you pull it through. Okay, and you hang it. So that's what you do if your house is moister and you hang it up high because heat rises, right? And the other thing is that you now have all this surface area of the plant exposed to air, right? It's not just like a little bit exposed to the air, something that's laying on the counter. It's now hanging in the air and it's exposed to air all the way around, okay? So this is something that you do if you're, if you're dealing with a little bit more moisture, okay? And you really need to um, make sure that your herb is, is, gets air all the way around. So again, you don't want it in direct sunlight. Um, so I have a, a baseboard in my kitchen that has little nails all along it and I'll just hang everything up like that. Some people also, what they do is they'll hang up um, a string like a little thing like this and they'll take a clothespin and they'll just clothespin each herb like that and they'll have, have it hang like that, okay? So again, this is when, again, remember the first th three things that we consider, environmental climate. So what I've talked about so far is environmental climate, household climate, and the moisture content of your plant, okay? And the time of year. So, if it's really dry, you can use the basket method. If it's a little bit moister, you're gonna wanna hang it. And also, if you're dealing with a moist plant, so again, I'm, I'm, uh, I'll use like marshmallow leaf or comfrey leaf, those herbs are really moist. And if, they, if you lay out a comfrey leaf and a tiny bit of the leaf folds over on itself, the place that where the leaf folds over on itself will turn black and you, you don't want that. And so comfrey leaf is one of those ones where you, you hang up individual leaves and let them dry and don't let anything touch it, okay? So that's what you do, like, you know, if you live by the coast or if it's moist or if it's winter somewhere and you, you have a house that's damp. Okay, so the other thing is that let, okay, so here's the thing. Let's say you do ha have an environmental climate that's damp, okay? Like where you live, it's just damp or it's, it's damp off and on, right? If you live in a moist area like coastal or if you have a damp house, here's what can happen. So I told you earlier about how I was raised in the Sacramento Valley and how I dried things there. But then for many years I lived in San Francisco and now I also live coastally. And what happens is that we have really great dry days and then the fog comes in and it's just wet as can be. And I'll have herbs that are completely dry that are hanging up, like they're dry, they're ready to be put in a jar. And if I leave them out during those moist days, 
they rehydrate and they get moist again. So if you live in one of these kind of areas, it's tricky because you'll be like, oh, it's dry, it's dry, it's almost dry. And then you really have to make sure that it's still dry when you get it into the jar. I just got an email from somebody who said her plants were dry, but then she put them in the jar and two weeks, you know, she opened it up later or she um, checked her herbs later and they were moldy. So you have to really check them. And dry means they're, you know, dry is like they're crunchy. You know, they're crunchy. You can hear them. They're crackly. There's no moisture. And if you don't know what that feels like, you're going to learn herb by herb, okay? Um, so you'll have an herb that's dry, and then it'll rehydrate or re-moisten. So again, if you live in one of these moist, damp places, you have to be careful. You have to wait until they're dry, and then once they're dry, you, you put them up. You get them in the jar and you put the lid on, okay? Because they will rehydrate if they're, and then they'll just get hot, dry, hot, you know, dry, wet, dry, wet, and then you start to lose the potency of the herb, okay? Um, so if you live in one of those kind of places where it's just like, I remember studying, uh, I spent some time in Arkansas when I was studying herbal medicine with Michael Moore. Uh, I, yeah, I could not get my herbs to dry. <laughs> It was just like, when is this herb going to dry? And so, see, that's this is the question that people have. I get this question really regularly. How long does it take such and such herb to dry? I can't answer that question because all these factors that we're talking about play a role, right? And so, again, you can have an herb that will be dry in two hours, any herb in the Sacramento Valley where I used to live, and then you have herbs in some of these other places I've been talking to talking to you about and they never dry, you know? So if you're in one of those situations where they never dry, then that's when we go for the dehydrator. Okay, so we've got the basket method. We've got the hanging method. And then if you're just like, this is crazy, my herbs are moist and dry and moist and dry and I've had too many moldy, or maybe they never dry, that's when you get a dehydrator. And your dehydrator, I have an Excalibur, but it's not the only thing, but it's, I like it because I can really lay things out. Thing, it's not like round where things, I have a heart, you know, it's square. And also I can control the temperature. You wanna get a dehydrator. There's a lot of dehydrators out there that you can't control the temperature. And um, the temperature is, you know, high. You wanna get a dehydrator that has a low temperature that, can, that you can control at 100 degrees. And so you wanna dehydrate your herbs on a really low temperature, um, 100 degrees, 105 degrees or lower, right? So you want a dehydrator that you can control the temperature. Okay, so those are the three things you consider and those are the three methods that I use. Now, again, every herb is different, every situation is different. The time of the year has a huge impact. So if you're harvesting herbs early spring, you're gonna be dealing with a higher moisture content than something that you're harvesting in the late fall, right? So that is, you know, what time of year it is. So maybe um, an herb that you, if you harvested it in the early spring, you really might need to do the hanging method but if you harvest it in fall, maybe the basket method would work for you, okay? So those are all the considerations. And as far as how long each herb takes to dry, there's no way that I can, I can answer that. And it really is about us, you know, this is about tuning into nature and using our senses and really having to like pay attention to our harvest, right? Is it dry? Is it not dry? Is it, has it just rehydrated? What's happening with this? And, and really know what dried herb feels like. You know, it's, it's, I've, I have people ask me like, well, what, it, how do I know when it's dry? You know, you know, it's dry when it's crackly. And when I'm touching this, there is no moisture and it's just, it's dry. It's like the difference when the leaves fall on the ground and they're still moist or when they're just dry, right? And those are, that's what we're doing. We're learning to redevelop our senses and our ability to perceive, um, you know, what's happening. So those are your three tips, um, the three things you consider, and then the three different ways to um, 
dry your herbs. I'd love to hear what do you, what herbs have you dried this year? Or have you had um, any of your dried herbs turn into science projects? <laughs> All right, during lavender in this damp coastal climate, drying lavender in this damp coastal climate. Okay, yeah, lavender, um, you know, you, you might have to do the hanging method and if you're really, you know, if it's just like one foggy day after another, you might need a dehydrator, right? So if you can get some dry spells or sometimes in the, in the, in the uh, coastal climate, you can get your house so that it's a little drier, right? Depends on how many sunny windows you have. Um, yeah, sometimes you can get things a little bit drier in your house, but a lot of times at the coast, you need a dehydrator and that is yeah any other questions have you had trouble with drying any herbs or um, what are you drying right now so francis says i bring it in the warm furnace room and use a dehydrator yeah so right you you use a dehydrator yep and then also you're you're using you know the first three things we consider right again the environmental climate and then the environmental the climate in your home and so you're using the climate in your home you're using the room where there's a furnace or there's a room where there's a wood stove you know if you live in a moist area so the there's an adjustment in in your household climate that helps you dry your herbs right Pamela is asking, when you dry the herb flowers, is it best to place the flower face down or does it matter? Okay, Pamela, which herb are you talking about? Tell me which herb, you know, so I can just really get an idea because every flower, every plant really is a little bit different. So you have um, flowers that are just really like, um, yeah, let me know what, what you're talking about. So you have something like mugwort, you know that it, like the flowers are like this it's like it just it really doesn't matter right like that and if you're in a dry place um, it, uh, it doesn't matter either really because it'll just dry but if you're in a moist area you you might okay all right so calendula if you're in a, in a moist area you might want to have the petals facing up so that more circulation can get onto the moister areas um and yeah so if you have individual um, buds like that like calendula i would just i lay it out where the flowers are up so yeah but then you know you have other like i said you have other flowers like like the flowers here of, of um, mugwort, and see these flowers, it's, you know, it doesn't really matter which way you put them, right? Any other questions about, um, so yeah, so Pamela, it looks, sounds like you have a calendula harvest going. That's good. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> dandelion, okay, dandelion flowers also. Dandelion flowers, um, again, that's just an individual flower, right? You just have this individual flower. And those you can lay, you lay them out carefully and I put the, the, the petals so the petals are up. Okay, and it's, it's more of a tedious process. Um, you just, you know, you pick each petal and you lay each petal out on the basket. Yeah, so yeah, so those are the three things you consider and then those are the three different methods that we use and you know that can that it changes with um with the time of year you're welcome pamela <laughs> see when you dry the herb flowers is it best okay yeah let's see i already answered that let's see the questions are just coming in yep yeah so it can you know again it can change with the kind of herb that you're using and with the time of year so I hope that helps. I get that question, Cami, how long should I let my herbs dry? And you, there's no way for me to answer that question because you first you have to, because it's dry when it's dry. <laughs> and I've had herbs dry in a couple hours and depending on where I live or where I am, I'll have herbs never dry. <laughs> so, Yep, there you have it. I hope that helps. I hope that you um, have success and uh, no, no, you know, once the herb is dry, then you get it in a bag and get it in a drawer or get it in a jar and get it in a cupboard so that it can't pick up the moisture again, okay? 
Okay. Thanks everybody. Thanks for being with me.